YBN Namir is an artist that exploded onto the scene with his hit song Rubbing Off the Paint in 2017 and had a fair amount of success. He had multiple songs go platinum and had songs with artists like Machine Gun Kelly, Chief Keef, Tyga, g Easy, and many more. For a while he was doing well for himself, but now he's regarded as nothing more than a meme. His 2021 album Vision Land sold 4,000 copies first week, the song Soul Train became a viral meme, and recently he's even mentioned starting in OnlyFans. After a long break from releasing music, he just came back with a new song and has has once again became the laughing stock of the hip hop community. But how did YBN Amir go from being a multi platinum artist to having his own L compilation? If you're in any way involved in the hip hop community, you've probably seen many jokes and memes being made at Namir's expense because of how his career has been doing this past year or so. It's fascinating to see him go from being such a popular rapper to being regarded as nothing more than a meme. So today I wanted to cover the things that I personally think led to this very unfortunate situation. But to get a clear understanding of how Namir's career fell apart, we have to go back to the beginning. So YBN Namir began his rapping career on Xbox after meeting multiple friends on GTA that he would freestyle with on Xbox Live parties. This is how YBN was born and it's become a meme among fans to make jokes about how all the hard stuff he's rapping about he actually was just doing in GTA and not in real life. He was also making GTA content on YouTube as well. He uploaded his first song in 2015 to YouTube called Hood Mentality featuring Almighty J and he would continue posting singles on YouTube and eventually SoundCloud for quite some time. He also posted a mixtape in 2016 called Believe in the Glow, and one in 2017 called YBN. Namir was just making music for fun with his friends and wasn't taking it too seriously. But everything changed when he dropped Rubbing Off the Paint. As soon as he dropped that song, it got 50k on SoundCloud in two days, which was crazy for him. And then he posted the music video on his YouTube channel, and Worldstar reached out to have them post the music video on their channel, and it went viral. Today, the video has over 200 million views. After the success of the song, he realized that he could make a career out of music and decided to take it more seriously. Keep in mind, around this time that he was blowing up, he was around 18 years old and was still still in high school. Other songs like Bounce Out With That, The Race Remix, and more were doing pretty well for him around this time too. In 2017 and 2018, he was making a name for himself and was pretty well respected in the rap game. Around the time he was blowing up, people were also talking about mumble rap and mumble crap and hating on music like that, and it's interesting to think that Namir was getting a lot of compliments about how he actually rapped and didn't just mumble or sing, which is ironic because a lot of those mumble rappers are still around today and Namir really isn't. In 2018, he dropped YBN the mixtape with Almighty J and Corday, and it did fairly well. It even had features from MGK, Lil Skies, Chris Brown, Wiz Khalifa, and Gucci Mane. However, something that I think played a major role in Namir's downfall happened in 2018. YBN Corday released his first single, which was a remix of Eminem's My Name Is. Corday was making music before under the name Entendre, but this was the first song he made under the name Corday. This song was posted on Worldstar and did very well for him. He started off his career strong with songs like Old Friends, Kung Fu, and more. He was well respected for his rapping abilities and his very mature seeming personality. In 2019, Corday released his debut album, The Lost Boy, and it did fairly well for a debut album and even got a Grammy nomination. At this point in time, it seemed like Corday's popularity was very much so overshadowing Namir's, especially since people seemed to respect Corday much more as an artist. Meanwhile, Namir wasn't really releasing music throughout 2019 or 2020. In August of 2020, Corday dropped YBN from his name, and it seemed like there was some turmoil, but at the end of the day, they said they were all still cool. And shortly after that, Namir announced that YBN was over. The only success that Namir had in 2020 is when his 2019 song Opstapa started to gain some attention on TikTok. He also made a remix version with 21 Savage and that was doing pretty well for him. But other than that, he wasn't really dropping too much music and by the end of 2020, it seemed like Corday had stolen the spotlight from Namir. Namir's career may have been slowing down around this time, but something happened in March of 2021 that would change the trajectory of his career forever. He finally dropped his debut studio album Vision Land and it only sold 4,000 copies first week. If you guys don't know anything about first week sales, that is not that good, especially for a rapper that has like 3 million followers on Instagram and has a song as viral as Rubbing Off the Paint. Not only was he getting clowned for that, but he had a song on the album called Soul Train that became a viral meme. If you somehow haven't heard Soul Train, you have to check it out because it's really funny, but it was so bad that people genuinely thought he made it just to get attention. And honestly, it worked because this is probably the most attention that Namir had received for the past few years. I wouldn't wish my worst enemies to ever have to hear this. Other than the quality of the music not really being there, it doesn't help that he dropped his debut album almost five years after blowing up onto the scene. Had he dropped it in 2018 or 2019, his career could have had a whole different trajectory. I also think it's possible there were some label issues that held him back from dropping the album. And I can't fully blame Namir because it must be hard when you blow up when you're 18 years old as you're making music for fun with your friends because he probably wasn't sure how to handle that and didn't really have a plan for his career. Especially because of how much money he was probably making, he was probably much more focused 
focused on having fun than he was on building a solid foundation for his career that would last a long time. Even as bad as his debut album went over, it somehow got worse. In the past year or two, he's had beef with Almighty J and Jace, where he was clowned on for acting fake gangster. He was also doing paid promo posts on his Instagram, which made fans think he was broke and it wasn't too much of a good look. More recently, Namir got caught arguing with a fan and threatening to shoot up his mom's house, which was posted by No Jumper, where Namir was seen in the comments begging for the post to be taken down. He also mentioned starting an OnlyFans, which he hasn't done yet, but of course he got made fun of for that too. And he also just released a song called Dead Wrong, accompanied with a music video where he can be seen air humping the ground and various other objects. It didn't really help that the song sounded like a very poor attempt at a pop radio hit. The comments on this video were both hilarious and ruthless. At this point, it seems like Namir can't catch a break, but a lot of it seems to be brought on by himself. So the million dollar question arises, can YBN Namir make a comeback? Honestly, I don't think so. Of course, anything is possible, but as of now, literally no one takes him seriously at all. To be fair to Namir, I can't imagine what it feels like to have the entire internet clowning you, and that probably causes him issues when it comes to making his music and figuring out what type of music he wants to put out. And I'm fairly certain the reason that he snapped on fans and had beef with other rappers is because of all the hate he gets, because it's gotta be really tough on your mental health when you're getting all this hate. Regardless, if he does want to make a comeback, he's gonna have to focus on making much better music and trying to repair his image to the best of his ability. Although it is super negative, he does have the attention of the entire hip hop community, and it's possible he could turn that attention into something positive. Although it would be really, really, really hard, it could be done. The last song that he put out wasn't actually that bad, and it shows that he still does have some potential. Even though the situation is very funny and entertaining, I can't help but feel bad for Namir. All love to him, and I hope despite all the hate, he can keep pushing forward and make some cool music. If you guys like this video, you might like my video where I talked about why Lil Skies disappeared and what's going on with his career right now. Other than that, though, this has been Matty Balls. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.